we're back with the Fertilizer Institute celebration of Global Fertilizer Day. We've got, we've got a very interesting person to meet next, uh, Liz Vandell. She's a senior engineering manager at the Smoky Canyon Mine. That's pretty cool. Liz is a miner. She, um, she works at J.R. Simplot Smoky Canyon Mine in Southeast Idaho, mining a phosphate shale that is used to make fertilizer for growing food for people and animals. She worked in the coal industry as a mining engineer for almost 20 years um, and as an environmental engineer, a blasting engineer, a short range planning engineer, and she did annual budgeting. She did long range strategic planning. She did uh, project engineering as well. She's got a diverse and varied background. She was born and raised in Southeast Idaho. She grew up on a small farm. She went to college in South Dakota and uh, she learned about mining there and got her interest in it. So let's, uh, let's see a little video from Liz and, uh, and, and come back and ask her some questions, but make sure that you, you fill out that Q&A at the bottom and we'll do our best to, uh, to ask Liz those hard questions that I'm sure that you're going to come up with. Fertilizer Day. We're excited to be with you today. My name is Melissa Biggie, and I am the Kansas Regional Representative for Nutrients for Life Foundation. And I'm excited to be joined today by Liz Vandal. You might ask what exactly a mining engineer does. Let's talk to her and find out. So welcome, Liz. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. As a mining engineer, can you give a brief overview of what all of that entails, starting with what exactly you do? That's a really good question. Mining is, is something that is done in order to uh, produce a raw material for a lot of purposes. I'm in a phosphate mine and the phosphate material is actually produced for fertilizer. And that fertilizer is used to grow corn, beans, sugar beets, potatoes, all of those wonderful things that I imagine you guys enjoy eating from time to time. As an engineer that works in a phosphate mine, we um, have a lot of different responsibilities. Uh, we deal with planning where we're going to be mining at. Mining is really the activity of digging a very large hole in the ground. But prior to starting the digging process, we have to figure out, well, is there anything there for us to dig for? And so in order to understand that, we go out and we drill these deep holes and we monitor what comes out of these holes, we take it to a lab and they sample it. And that tells us, hey, there's something here that's a value that we can go after and then sell. So that's what we've done. We've created this picture of this big body of phosphate ore that we are now creating a, a big hole around and mining it so that we can produce the fertilizer. As a mining engineer, we also look at the safety of how we're digging these holes so that they're not collapsing and killing our workforce. Um, and that's a very big part of mining because mining um, over the last several hundred years has been known to be the most dangerous industry that people can work in. And so we take a lot of pride in making sure that our workforce is kept safe. We also deal with a lot of agencies um, on the environmental front. We deal with permissions from the Bureau of Land Management, from the Forest Service, from the EPA and all kinds of different organizations that make sure that we are following all of the rules in order to make sure that we're not harming the, the environment as we're mining. We also work with big equipment. We have huge haul trucks that can haul up to 150 tons of dirt. We have large shovels that we use in order to load those trucks. We have other big equip equipment that we use for the process. And so we look at how that equipment needs to be uh, set up out in the pits and how we need to produce, at what rate we need to produce the ore that we're mining. So we manage a lot of different things. Uh, as I have described, a mining engineer, we are a jack of many trades and a master of nothing. So we do a lot of chemical type stuff. We do a lot of mechanical kind of work. We do a lot of electrical kind of work. So if you look at all the different trades of, of engineering, you will find that uh, mining covers a good chunk of those different trades. And why did you make this career choice? 
You know, that's a really interesting question. And when I was working through my uh, profile, I, it made me really kind of go back and think that through. So I grew up on a farm in southeastern Wyoming, and I absolutely loved being on the farm. We ran cattle. I loved working with the cattle. So being in the ag world was what I grew up and knew. Really did not know about mining in the sense of having an engineering degree, but I always loved watching old Western movies that had mining type activities going on. To my father's dismay, I was always out trying to tunnel my way across the farm from having watched these movies. So there was something, I guess, that really drew me to mining long before I even understood. When I went to college, I uh, wanted to go into architectural engineering. And I, having grown up in the, a small rural community, really wasn't interested in having to move to a large city. So then I switched over to civil engineering. And uh, that would have allowed me to kind of still pursue my architectural goals, but have a better opportunity for where I wanted to live. Um, my first semester in college, the adv advisor that was assigned to me happened to be the department head for mining. And in one of my early conversations with him, he asked, would you be interested in being a mining engineer? And I had to uh, humbly say, I have no idea what you are asking because I don't know what that is. And so he went through and explained it to me and that made an opportunity for me to go with a student that was working in a small gold mine up in the Black Hills of South Dakota and uh, spent an afternoon with her and around the big equipment and in this great big sandbox. And I came back and said, I think I'll be a mining engineer. And so that's how I ended up kind of in getting into mining. We talked a little bit about your education, but once you were out of college, what did your path look like to get to where you're at today? When I came out of school, the uh, mining world was a little bit recessed. There wasn't a huge number of jobs. I'm from Wyoming, and so our largest industry in the state of Wyoming has been coal uh, mining. And I was able to secure a, a position within the coal industry. And really, I just came out with the idea that I don't know a lot about this industry because I did grow up in the egg industry and I wanted to be able to pursue my field of interest, but yet be fairly close to my family and, and my roots. And so fortunately, with Wyoming's main industry being in the mining world, um, I got to accomplish that goal. As I got further into my career, I, I really, made a decision that I wanted to be the best mining engineer I could possibly be. And so um, a lot of the, there, there's a lot of different avenues that mining engineers are responsible for. We have, we do designing for short range planning, long range planning, mid range planning. So what's the big picture of the mine? What's the, you know, five year picture of the mine? What are we going to do tomorrow? And I wanted to learn how to do the engineering for all the different kinds of equipment. How do you plan for a big drag line? How do you plan for a, a blasting program? How do you plan for a big shovel operation? And these are all different functions that happen inside of mines. And I wanted to learn every one of those functions so that I could be an overall, you know, rounded engineer and be able to be a, a big asset to any mining company. And uh, so that became my passion. I'm always learning. I continue to learn every single day, but I have accomplished a lot of that goal and I, and I love what I do. What were your degrees in? My degree is in, um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Mining Engineering uh, that I received from the South Dakota School of Mines in Rapid City. I have not been a person who wanted to go on for a master or a, a PhD. I like the learning hands-on approach more than being in school. I don't regret going to college, and I think that that was a good step for me, but it's not for everybody, and I'll be very honest about that. So over the course of my career, yes, I've had a lot of, a lot of technical training, but being an engineer is not just about being a technically sound engineer. It's also about being able to communicate what it is that you're designing and planning. And so along with that professional development comes leadership development, um, how to play well with others, how to interact with others. You know, and those skills are, are ever bit and in some ways more critical 
in the growth of, of a person than just being technically strong. We're going to shift gears here and start talking a little bit more about uh, your job. Um, you talked a little bit earlier and it has a lot of different pieces to it. So what does a typical day look like? Well, <clears throat> my day is crazy at times. <laughs> So when I come in in the morning, I get here usually around 7 o'clock. Um, I work a usually 10 to 11 hour day, but I only have to work four days a week. So that really allows me some time to enjoy other activities. Right now, I'm, I'm actually working as a manager of the engineering group. And um, so part of my day is making sure that my team is in a good state of mind, that they're ready to work, um, that they have their questions answered, they understand what the goals are, and, and making sure if they've got any problems or hurdles that are keeping them from being able to do what they're here to do, um, that I'm addressing those. In order to be in line, you have a lot of permitting activity that has to be done. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a number of agencies that we have to work with. And so anytime we come across a situation where we don't have permission within our permits, to do a certain function, we have to request that request permission, and that's through a permitting process. So I have other another engineer that will spend quite a bit of time putting that, those, those um, letters together to ask for those permissions in order to continue with some of these activities. You know, our, my day changes every single day. Some days I'm dealing with people issues, some days I'm working on a spreadsheet, some days I'm working on a design. Some days I'm not even in my office, I'm outside visiting with people, addressing issues. So there really isn't a typical day? No, no, there's not. Okay. Um, what are some of the challenges you face in a given day and how do you overcome those challenges to get your job done? You know, um, communication is probably the most critical aspect of any job. And it is probably one of the things that is the hardest about any job. Communication is not just being able to talk. It's also being able to hear and to understand. And there's times where no matter <laughs> how you say it, it doesn't always come across to the other person the way you expect it to do. And so, you know, there's a lot of days I spend unsaying something that was said or unwrapping something that was misunderstood and um, so communication is a big challenge and <clears throat> in a mining industry you've got a lot of people this operation we employ about 225 people and trying to communicate a message a clear message to 225 people is not an easy task to do and and to get them all corralled and headed in a direction is even more of a challenge and, but it's very critical to the operation that we're all functioning together and working in the same direction because that's how we end up being able to stay in business. And when we're all going, you know, 10 different directions, that's very, co very costly to the organization. And at some point, if we aren't managing that properly, they can and will close us down. So we have a responsibility of being able to communi communicate clearly and, and make sure that we're managing how we're doing things so that we can continue to, to uh, keep our jobs and move forward. What is your favorite part about your job? You know, every day is a, brings a new challenge. I'm always looking for ways to make the operation better. Um, and then not just me, it's, it's the challenge of getting everybody to be a part of making things better. Being innovative, um, finding new, you know, just new ways of thinking and approaching some of the problems. You know, one of the things that, that can happen is you end up feeling like you're solving the same problem over and over. And if you can find a way where you can build a process or, or come up with a, a solution that solves that problem for good, that, that's one of the funnest things that I find in my career and in what I do every day is putting that repeated problem to bed for the, for the last time. Is there something unique that makes your job special or a fun fact that you'd like to share? Mining is a very unique world and there's, it's a very small world amongst a lot of this country. 
you know, we mine coal to create electricity, we mine phosphate to create fertilizer. We mine a lot of different materials in order for our country and our people to have the things that they enjoy from a day-to-day -day basis. And I think being able to know that what I do every day is allowing our, the people of our country and of this world to have the resources that they need in order to live and survive. And um, mining is where it all starts. Well, uh, we would like to thank Liz for joining us today and talking a little bit about her career and the path to get where she's at. And thank you very much for being with us. Wow, that was fascinating. Uh, Liz, why don't you turn your camera on and we will we will ask you some more questions. Let's see if I can get things to work right here. So we wait for Liz. That was uh, that was a very interesting video that we just saw. Can you hear me, Carl? I can hear you, Liz. I can't quite see you yet. Oh, let me see if that helps. Does that help? Uh, you're getting closer. Something lit up for a second, but uh, not quite. Let me give it one more shot there, Liz. I'm not finding my camera thing this morning. You know, Liz, we're in a we're in a Zoom world these days, but technology is still is still sometimes not our friend. And I'm not real familiar with this particular software. So I apologize be, for the delay. That's okay. In the lower left-hand corner of your screen should be a, uh, a video, little video icon if you can click on that. It's a, it's a I've got it unclicked, it should be working. Yeah, no. It's, I've uh, had some issues with uh, my connection this morning, so there may be a little bit of a delay occurring. Well, we can hear you fine, Liz. Why don't we just uh, Why don't we just have a chat for a few minutes, and uh, uh, we will soldier on. You know, that's that's the way things have to go, don't you think? Hey. You know, we had a we had a question come in, Liz, that I thought was fascinating, and it, it came in earlier uh, when we were talking to some folks from from uh, Nutrien, but it's a very straightforward question, but I don't, I have a feeling it's not gonna have a straightforward answer. Is mining fertilizer dangerous? Yes, you know, mining, any type of mining um, is dangerous because you are, you're digging a hole in mother earth. And um, when you start creating a hole, um, the earth likes to fill itself back in and so, uh, we spend a lot of time, a lot of money on um, methods and, and technology um, and resources to help us uh, better understand what our geology can handle from what angles we cut the walls that we build in um, our faulting. There's a number of components, uh, the type of material, the fractures of the material. You know, a lot of the material here is, is very fractured. Um, yep. So it's not a competent material uh, naturally. And so then as you start cutting into it, its natural tendency is to want to fail. Um, but there are points of, uh, you know, what we'll do is we'll core the material and we'll take and we'll do compression type analysis and tensile type analysis to determine kind of what the friction levels are for the material, what it can tolerate for weight um, and angles of, of of sloping and um, with that information then we're able to um, design a pit that is safe. Um, but there's other aspects of mining, you know, the two most dangerous industries um, is actually agriculture and mining and, and both of them are dealing with, you know, the earth and big equipment um, and the big equipment is very dangerous. Um, it's very hard to see in these haul trucks. A haul truck driver who has no visibility um, 25 feet past the right side of his truck. So if you can imagine being in a car or in a pickup 
and not being able to see it all the way across the interstate, um, it's a it's a it's a dangerous area to be in. So yes, it is a very dangerous industry. Um, but uh, one of our our number one priority over anything else that we do is safety. And uh, so we we talk, we teach, we spend a lot of time with safety. Wow, wow, that's that's fascinating. Um, for our teachers out there, put put your questions in the Q and A. Uh, unfortunately, we're having a little bit of video is, issue, but uh, but we've got Liz, who's a, a senior engineering manager at the Smoky Canyon Mine for JR Simplot, with us, and uh, and she is she is answering your questions. Tell us tell us a little bit about JR Simplot, if you wouldn't mind, Liz. I've known J.R. Simplot uh, for the majority of my life. I, um, having grown up on the uh, farm, uh, we used to purchase Simplot fertilizer and there's actually a, a distribution center in my hometown. Um, when I was younger and, and um, looking at coming into engineering and, and, and going into mining, one of my, my grandfather, who was very much a mechanical minded person and ended up being an engineer, um, made, made this comment. He said, find a good company. And if you're loyal to them, they're loyal to you. And um, at that time, I had a hard time understanding what my grandfather was saying. Um, and there's not a lot of companies out there that are that way, but Simplot is that way. They're very loyal to the people. And consequently, you want to be loyal to them. They, they are a great company to work for. Wow, that's a theme that we haven't we haven't talked on today in the uh, in the, the the couple hours that we've been we've been doing this, and that's and that's and that's loyalty. We've talked about being curious. We've talked about keeping your 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 mind open, but working for a family company as JR Simplot is, uh, I understand what you're saying, Liz, and and. Uh, and that loyalty is a is 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 a deep thing. Um, talk a little bit, if you would, again about how you got started in mining, because I, I think it's 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 fascinating, and it's uh, and you've got a great life story, Liz. You know, um, a lot of people grow up with you know certain things in mind, like I want to go out and be a doctor, or I want to be a nurse, or I want to be a lawyer. Or, you know, those are some of the more common ideas that we grow up with. Um, not realizing that I had an engineering uh, mind until I was probably in high school and the teacher said, you know, you're probably going to want to go into engineering because I loved working with drafting and, and I was very good with math. And so not really having grown up in an engineering based family. Um, um, my, my first love was architectural type work and drawing plans for homes and businesses and things of that nature. And the more I learned about, you know, and just, just to kind of pause for a minute, you know, this is back in the, the 80s. And so we didn't have the internet. So it wasn't like I could get online and go research and figure out what all these different degrees are. I had to depend on my counselors and teachers and people that had been out in the industry to, to kind of educate and school me. So I knew engineering was where I wanted to go. I, I love sports and I wanted to play college sports. And um, one day my one of my teachers and coach came to me and said, there's a school up in Rapid City, South Dakota. And I had been up to Rapid many times with my family and I loved that area. And that's how I discovered the School of Mines up there. And it was a small engineering college, about 2,000 students, and one of the top ranked engineering schools. And they had about 100%, about a 99.5% um, um, employment record. So it, you, could, you get a degree there, you're pretty much insured having a job. So that's how I got to the South Dakota School of Mines. Well, as I got to know more about architectural engineering, I like, man, I don't really want to live in the big city. I'm not a big city kind of a person. Um, and learned that civil engineering is very similar and would still allow me to, to, to go after those goals of drafting and that kind of stuff. And um, my professor that was assigned to me as an advisor happened to be the department head for mining. And I mean, just 
what's the luck or, or the odds of being assigned to that person. And as we got to talking, and, uh, when he knew I was from Wyoming, he's like, so uh, would you like to be a mining engineer? I mean, it's very similar to being a civil engineer. And I really didn't know anything about such a profession, never even had heard of such a thing. And uh, so he arranged for me to, to take this tour of a, a gold mine up in the Black Hills. And um, I always loved playing in the dirt and, and, you know, being, there's something very soothing about being around the dirt for me. And uh, after I got done touring this big mine, I'm like, hmm. I said to the, the, the student that was giving me the tour, I said, so they actually pay you to play in a big sandbox. And uh, she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I think I could do this. And really it just went from there. And I uh, finished my college degree um, in the mid nineties and um, went to work in the coal industry, which allowed me to stay within about three hours of my family. And, um, you know, the coal industry for a very long time was very stable, so it was a good job. And um, I worked in some of the biggest mines um, in the world there. Um, and so I got exposed to everything you can imagine from mining costs, um, short, long, mid range, you blasting. I spent a number of years developing big cast blasts where we were shooting two to three million pounds of explosives every other day. So it was a, it was fun, it was exciting, it was fast moving. Um, and it, it developed a lot of skills in this world that I knew very little about when I started my college, my college experience. Well, you have just trumped my favorite line of the day. It was do things that you're scared of. And now you can find jobs where you get to play you get paid to play in a big sandbox. That is my favorite line of the day, Liz. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up with a giant thank you to you for being flexible and nimble with this video issue. And we just we just soldiered on. Uh, you've answered the questions that came in, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for being part of the global fertilizer industry, and we and we hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, Carl. This has been a real pleasure for me also. Thank you. Wow. Wow. That was cool. That was cool to talk to a miner. You don't get to talk to a miner every single day.